Hey there YouTube fans, AC Productions here and today I'm going to be showing you how to install hazard warning lights on your R3. Well first off I did have an incident where I needed to pull over to the side but notice that I don't even have any warning signals on my bike. I noticed that my buddy on his uh, Suzuki Jixer had warning lights and I was like well that sucks, not fair. The only thing I have is either a left and right switch and that's all I had. So I had to use something that was better than nothing so I just used my turn signals as my warning lights. This video is going to be on how to make a proper warning system on your bike. Okay, here are the tools that you're gonna need for this project. Soldering gun, 10 amp fuse, amp fuse holder, pliers, wire strippers, heat treat tubing, and a lighter to heat up the tubing. If you don't have this, you could also use electrical tape. Also, you're gonna need eight female connectors, you're going to need two smaller connectors for the battery. You're going to need some solder, zip ties. We're going to be using red, black, and yellow cable for this project. It's 18 gauge. Wire cutters. I'm using the needle nose pliers because it has the wire cutting option here. The scissors. And then some uh, rosin core paste flux for the soldering. It helps uh, solder connections easier. Sorry guys, I forgot to also show you the switch that I got for this project. The switch I got for this project is uh, looks like this. Comparing to another switch that I really like, make the bike look more factory with that switch, but considering that we don't have that much space on our R3, uh, this would be second to our option. Just because this area is so narrow, uh, it fits perfectly on a location that we had selected. It's an on and off switch with a rubber uh, thing here. I would say down would be off, on would be up. It's made out of the, the body over here. It's made out of aluminum and it does have a light inside which I'll show you in here The cable here. I would suggest putting some silicone um, Around the back end or some something maybe like some silicone or epoxy something so that water if it does rain If you get caught in the rain water doesn't get into the connection I would not say that this this switch is waterproof I would say more maybe water resistant because of the little rubber thing that it has here it does have three cables inside all right our first cable that we're gonna do is gonna be our power cable so we're gonna get a uh, our red cable and we are going to measure I would say probably around four inches so get your ruler and measure around four inches we don't want to do too much cable because we don't want so much cable all over the place uh, I think four inches should be good enough uh, it'd probably be a little bit but you know so we're gonna measure four inches we're gonna cut it and then we're gonna measure another one we're gonna have three cables all together at four inches. Like I said, we need uh, three relays, three cables all together. Now that you got all your all your cables cut, you're gonna splice all three of them uh, on both ends. So on one, we are going to splice just enough to put the female connector on. That'll be on both of these. What you're gonna do is you're going to twist both ends of the cable. So you're splicing both. You're gonna, you're actually gonna twist them in this, in this manner. We're actually gonna put our female connector on it. So instead of twisting it the other way, which I normally do, since we're gonna be putting a female connector onto it, you want to splice it so it looks like this. Okay. Once you splice all your cables and you have those two connected like this, that third cable, we're gonna connect it to this one here. So you got like a wishbone-looking cable. And then this other one, we're gonna bend like a U shape and we're going to connect that one to the other to one of the cables. Twist them together and this is going to be your positive cable. It's going to be your power cable that's going to connect to the battery. All right so your cable should look like this. You can have three cables all together. Two cables are going to be connected in the V shape and they're going to be tied together here at the bottom. This is the third cable is going to connect to one of them and it'll be connected here on the top and it's going to be curved. Okay now we're going to put our female ends on all, on all the cables. So you're going to get your female connector here, female connector on this end here. We are going to have three, three female connectors. So it'll be like this. You'll have three female connectors. You're going to crimp all three connectors. On this one we're not going to crimp because this one we're going to actually have it solder it to our main uh, inline fuse for our power. So that leave this one alone because we're going to solder that one later. But you're going to have three connectors like this. Get up close. One, two, three. And you're going to crimp every every connector. Okay, if you have any heat shrink tubing, we're going to cut them to size. I would say this would be around one inch. So heat shrink tubing that's going to go over your connectors, cut them down to one inch 
each. And all you're going to do is just slide them over and then we're going to heat shrink, the we're going to uh, heat it up and shrink the tubing over. This will isolate the connectors, prevent them if they were to ever touch, prevent any shorts. Okay, after you heat shrink all the tubing over your connectors, should look like so. Put it over the white ruler so you can see it better. So you just have all uh, your three connectors heat shrinked and uh, your one exposed like that because that's the part we're going to connect to the power. Okay, now we're going to do our negative cable. We're going to measure four inches also on our negative and we're going to cut three four inch length cables on our negative. So we got one right here and now we're going to do two more at four inches. So if you have your, your ruler handy right now would be a good time to use it. Okay, now that you got your, your three negative cables, you're going to splice all three of them on, on each end. You're going to first splice the top end and then you're going to uh, splice the bottom end. Okay, after you splice both ends of your cables, it should look like this on either end being spliced. Now you're going to get two of your cables and you're going to tie them both together at the top. So you're going to get two cables and tie them together here at the top. So just twist them together and again, just like the positive cables, it's kind of kind of look like a like an A-shape wishbone style. Okay, next you want to grab your your third and on this one we're also going to connect on to the bottom here. And you also want to twist these together at the end. And you can kind of like pre-bend that one because that's how it's going to be. So once it's done, it should look like this. It should be the top here together. And then you're going to have three female connectors on it. One here, one here, and one here. So one, it's going to be connected up here, tied together. Then once you get to the bottom, this one, the third one is going to be tied at the bottom and bent over as so. Now let's put our female connectors on. And you're going to be putting the female connectors on the bottom parts. Not at that top part. So you're going to put one there. So it's going to look like this. It should look just like so. All three female connectors at the bottom. And here at the top it should be just like that. Because we're going to be soldering this actually to our negative cable on our switch. So that's going to be soldered there. But these ones are going to connect to the relays. Okay, once you crimp them all down, it should be like that. If you, don't, if you happen to have female connectors that already have the insulation on there, that's great. If you don't, just have and you just have them bare like that. Just get the heat shrink tubing and then shrink the tubing over it. It's pretty much the same thing. But if you get the other way, it just saves you money on the heat shrink tubing. So it's up to you on how you want to have your female connectors either bare like that and then either just put uh, electrical tape over them. The better way is just to have heat shrink tubing and put that over it. It's up to you on, on which female connectors you choose. So it look like so after crimping all the connectors. Okay, next we're going to do our load cable. And with that, we're also going to do four inches. And we're going to get two cables for this project right here. For this one, we're going to use our yellow cable for this. All right, so for this one, we're going to have two yellow cables. And we're going to splice all on each end. Okay, and how we're going to connect these two together. Uh, I have one already curved. And this one is going to be together like so. So it's going to kind of look like a, like an M almost. So you're going to get the two ends together on this one. And you're just going to twist tie them together. And then you're going to have only two female connectors on this one. Because this one is going to connect to your brown cable on your switch. Which is going to allow the switch to light up when you put your hazards on. It's a good idea sometimes when the cables are kind of thick to twist the female connector as you're pushing it in into its uh, into its connection. So it should look like this. Two female connectors and this one's going to be bare because this one's going to connect to our brown cable on our switch. And this is going to allow our switch to light up when we press it on and it's going to blink along with the flashers so you know that your flashers are on. Okay and finally we're going to do our turn signal uh, cables. I'm going to do one yellow and one in red. It really doesn't matter on this, in this department which is which. If you want to do two reds that's up to you. You want to do two yellows that's up to you. You know it, it's really it's really up to you on, on how you want to do it. Uh, as far as on the R3, uh, the real colors on the R3, you have your green and you have a brown. If you happen to have those colors of cables around and you want to use those, you can. It's, it's all up to you if, if you want to stay with the, the colors of the R3 or you could pick your own colors. Cables I have right now are red and yellow and that's what I'm going to use. And this one we're going to be using one foot 
of each cable. This is going to give us the space that we're going to need to connect our relays somewhere else on the bike uh, so it doesn't have to be all bundled up really close by. So this will give us the length that we need to uh, position our relays somewhere else and away from everything. One foot of yellow and one foot of red. Okay, and on this one, we are going to only, we are going to splice on both ends, but we're only going to put female connectors on one end. Okay, this is how our connector is going to be. After you spliced on both sides, on uh, both ends of the wires, now you're going to get only two female connectors on this one. And you're just going to connect the female connector, one on the red and one on the yellow. So it should be as so. One on the yellow and one on the red. Only one side is going to have the female connectors. The other sides are just going to be bare wire because we're actually going to connect these bare wires to the wires on our R3. One wire is going to go to the green wire, the other wire is going to go to the brown wire. And those are our turn signal lights, which after we do this this uh, connection, it's going to become our hazard lights. That's going to be for the, the signal lights right there. All right, guys, here's our, all our wires that we have. We have our positive wire, negative wire, our lamp load wire, and then our two turn signal wires. That's how it, it should look like. Next, we're going to be connecting these to the relays. Alright guys, I'm going to make this super simple on installation for the hazard lights on an R3. You're going to have your cables that we previously did, our positive, our negative, and our load cable. Then these two cables turn signal. And then we have three relays. Okay, we have our flasher relay, and you're supposed to have two single pole relays. So single pole will look like this. There's going to only be four connectors on there. Flasher relay, and you want to get one that says for four lamps because that's gonna be for your two front and your two rear LED. If you have LEDs, if not, if you have regular lights, it's fine. This works for both LED and regular standard light bulbs. So on this one, you wanna make sure you also get, this is a flasher relay and that's what it's called. And on this one, you're only gonna see three pins, a positive, a negative, and a load, uh, which is gonna be the, the lamps. L for load or lamps, however you want to call it. It's only a three prong flasher relay. So one of these and two of these. Either have three in a row like so. To put them together like I did with this one, you want to get some shoe goo. Put a little dab of shoe goo here and put it together and then put a zip tie over it and let it sit overnight. Once it's done, you could break the zip tie off and you'll have it nicely securely and bonded together while we start doing the relays I'm going to tell you which number I am connecting the cables to when you look onto your relay you're gonna see that there's numbers on here 86 85 30 and 87 so as I'm connecting the wires I will tell you which number I'm connecting those wires to so when you look at even though there's a diagram here actually when you turn it over you're gonna see there's actually numbers imprinted into the plastic so it will make it easier also to find out which number I'm connecting it to as far as the flasher relay if you look at it, it'll show a diagram and on it it'll show on the left side it'll be a positive or right side will be a negative but I also believe that there is probably numbers on this one too the bottom one is always going to be the letter L so it'll be the load so you'll see over here it's 49A and when you turn this one around all you see on there is letters it's clear it's easy to see on on the display here you got positive negative and your load so when you look at it positive negative or vice versa and your load and on this one I'll let you, I'll pinpoint to you which one I'm connecting what color to okay we're gonna get started with our red cable so now on our red cable we're gonna connect to, on the flasher relay we're gonna connect to the positive side so if you're looking at it this way positive is gonna be here on the right side so let's get our cable and plug it into the positive like so on our single pole relay we're going to connect it to the 30 so if you're looking at it this way it's the vertical pin also right next to the vertical pin you'll see the number 30 on it so we're connecting the positive to the number 30 on the single pole relay on the second single pole relay it's the same number if you're looking at it this way if it's kind of confusing just look for the the tab that has the number 30 next to it as soon as you find that tab it's mainly the vertical one here. We're going to connect our positive cable to that one. And just make sure you slide your uh, your connectors all the way in. Okay, next we're going to grab our negative cable. Now, the negative on our flasher relay, it's going to be the left side of the relay. So we're going to grab our connector there. And we're going to 
put it over the left side of the flasher relay. Now on our single pole relay, we're gonna be connecting the negative cable to number 85 on our single pole relay. It's gonna be the one with the number 85 next to the tab. So look for 85 next to the tab and connect your negative cable there. And then the same thing on our second single pole relay. We're gonna look for the number 85, which is right there, and we're gonna connect our negative cable to that tab. Okay, next we're gonna get our yellow cable, which is our load or lamp, however you wanna uh, name it, and we're gonna connect that one on our flasher relay, it's the last one that's not connected, which is the horizontal one. So we're going to connect our yellow cable to that connector. Okay, and then when looking into our, our single pole relay, we're going to be connecting the yellow cable onto the number 86. So look for the 86, and the 86 is on this side. Alright, so we're going to connect our cable there to the 86. We're going to slide it right on there. And then same thing on our second single pole relay. Look for the tab that says 86, which is on this side, pretty much right across from the negative, and we're gonna put our cable there. Okay, next, we're gonna be connecting our cables that are gonna go to our turn signals. And for that one, turn signal cable, it, like I said, it doesn't matter which color you connect to which, as long as you connect it to the right tab. Now I'm going to start with my red cable and the turn signal wire it's going to be number 87. So when you're looking at your single pole relays we're not going to be doing anything with the flasher because we already connected all three cables in the flasher. This is for the single pole relays now. When you're looking at it it's going to be the last tab that you have not connected. So it will be number 87 if you look at it. So 87 is going to be our turn signal cable. So we'll put the red one and then we got our other turn signal cable on our next single pole relay will be number 87 so look for the 87 tab and slide your your connector over that all right so there you guys have it that's that's the whole connections all right there okay we're gonna have to expose some of these wires on here so we could actually attach them to our switch here so you want to grab your exacto knife and be careful you just want to cut the outer part of the cable okay once you get it going on on cutting the insulation off i would say you want to get a good enough amount of wire are you able to get your wire splicers and be able to trim any cable out so I would say about there should be good enough once you get to this part just get your knife or your scissors you could go with the scissors and just cut up to the wire area so you on your switch you're gonna have a brown cable blue cable and a black cable for your negative okay so we're gonna splice all three wires and we don't have to splice that much just a little bit and then make sure you twist ends on, on all three of them. Okay, next you want to grab your negative cable and you want to measure five feet of negative cable. This is going to go directly to your battery on the negative side. So I would say five feet of negative cable should be good enough to reach the whole length of your bike from the front to the back. And then you also want to do the same thing with your positive cable. Because this connection is going to be directly connected to your battery. This way, if you ever need to pull over and use your hazard lights, maybe you're, something's wrong with your bike, you want to keep your bike running, you could actually have your bike off and still have your hazard lights on. Okay, now that you cut both cables, now we're going to splice the ends of it. And we're going to attach our little, our little ends there. And this is going to go straight for the battery. You don't, have to, you don't have to clip that much, just a little bit. And then insert your cable. Did a little too much, but that's okay. All right, and then you want to crimp the, the connector to the cable. Give it a little tug. It should be on there pretty tight. Okay, and then you want to do the same thing with your negative cable. You just want to grab it and uh, splice the, the end of it. Insert your, your connector and also crimp it. Give it a little tug. It should be on there pretty tight. And this, this once you take out the, the, the screw from the battery, you'll insert it inside, and this will give a good connection. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to grab our negative cable that's going to go all the way straight to the negative battery of our R3. We're going to splice the end over here. And then on our switch cable, we're going to grab the negative side and we're just going to, oh, before we put that, let's put our heat shrink tubing over our connection here. And just slide it as far as you can away from where we're going to solder it. It's right about there. Okay, now we're going to grab our connection here and we're just going to fold, fold it over tight there. Alright, now we're going to grab some solder paste and we're going to put some over and then we're going to solder our connection. 
Okay, once we solder our connection, we're going to grab our heat shrink tuber and slide it right over our soldered connection. And then we're going to shrink the tubing. Now we're going to grab our positive cable that we're going to get from for our battery and we're going to solder it to our inline fuse. We're going to splice the end of this. Okay, so we're going to get our heat shrink tubing and we're going to slide it over our cable. And as far as away from our power we're going to solder, make sure that we have our ends twisted and then we'll just fold over our connection. Okay, I was going to put a little bit of solder paste on this and then we're going to solder our connection. Okay, once our solder connection is done, we're going to slide over our heat shrink tubing. Okay, once you get it over, now I'm going to shrink the tube. All right, so now you're all done. The opposite end on the brake side, you're going to have your brake reservoir here. Oh, this is for your front brakes. And as you can see, there's actually a little bit of space that we could actually use to put our switch. So what we're going to need to do is going to have to loosen up these two bolts here, and then we're going to move this further to this end. So that way we could uh, install our switch on that side. Okay, so you want to grab your eight millimeter and just loosen with the bolts okay and then you just want to move it all the way to your left once you move it all to all the way to your left just tighten the bolts back up just want to make sure you get it nice and tight but don't make sure you don't over tighten the bolts because you can't strip the inside of that and to replace this is going to be very costly so now that you have moved it over to the side now we're going to put our hazard light indicator switch right over here Okay, so we're going to get our switch here and we're just going to take out these two screws at the bottom. Okay, now that you got your, your bottom half of your switch taken off, your switch here should go over like so. And then once you get it on there, you want to get your little bottom clamp, put the screws on. And at this time, you want to put some thread lock uh, on your screw before you put it inside. Okay, after trying to fight with trying to put it on there, I think I'm going to try a different method. I'm going to actually take off the whole um, brake lever and, um, and then just take it from there because it just kind of seems impossible at the moment on actually trying to get the bracket to fit. So once you get it off, just put it off to the side for now. Okay, now with the, the, the other bracket in, in the way, we are going to attempt to try to put our hazard light switch on. And look at that, it just fits a lot better now without anything in the way. It's still going to be tricky on trying to screw in it in. Remember, remember to put on your thread lock on your uh, screw to just thread it in there lightly because you still need to put the other bolt in. Okay, now that you get the, both bolts on there, you could just go ahead and start tightening it down but make sure you don't do it all the way because we still need to move it as far back to this location as possible hopefully we can still put our bracket in let's see uh, again no it doesn't look like it's going to be fitting we're going to have to try to move our throttle because even though this was the the slimmest profile of a switch I could find. Okay, after doing a few tests, I found a sweet spot. Now I found out that how we could actually make our hazard light and our brake lever coexist on one handle. What you're gonna have to do, and uh, if you're gonna be doing this project, you're gonna have to do this. Don't worry, uh, I'll guide you step by step on how to do it. It's not that hard, and it actually is gonna work out very nicely. So you're gonna have to remove at least one screw and loosen the other. So you're gonna have to remove the front screw of this one and loosen up the back screw on that one. So let me show the two screws you need to loosen and remove okay you're gonna have to loosen this screw right here so if you're looking at it just follow it. it's the only screw that's visible so loosen this screw as much as you can don't take it off just loosen it and on the other side there is a screw you're gonna see like a little kind of indentation here there's a screw in there you're gonna have to remove that screw completely once you remove that screw completely on your uh, kill switch here so lift up the cover once you lift up the cover now you could actually slide your whole lever in and out. So what you want to do is just slide it out as much as you can pretty much as soon as you start hitting your handlebar slider. So just make sure you uh, move it all the way to the end there. And with that it's actually going to give us a lot more space. As you could see this is where originally it was. It was actually up to right there. But now that we're able to you know slide it out more now we have extra space. Now we should be able to have both our hazard light and our brake up it actually fits perfectly now and our uh, brake lever coexists on one handle and still be able to use the throttle with no problem now we're gonna put the bolt back in right over here on this little indentation there we're gonna put the bolt back in and we're gonna close this little box here and then we're gonna tighten down the little screw that's right over here tighten it back up okay now before we put our brake lever back in its spot and before we tighten this up let's find a position on your handlebar for your hazard light what I mean is it's fine the position you want your your light to be do you want it to be straight do you want it to be down more do you want it to be up more you know just find out that, that spot that you 
you prefer, sit on your bike if you have to, and then find find that nice position or that nice spot that you would like your, your switch to be. That's to be turned on, that's off. So I think I would like mine to be centered and I think that'd be a good spot for me. So once you find that uh, good sweet spot, what you wanna do is uh, tighten out the little bolts that are at the bottom here. Before we do that, let's uh, make sure that when you put your bracket back on, there is a little sign or a little arrow that actually says up. Uh, so it is directional, so you wanna make sure you put this correctly. Okay, I already tightened down the, the switch. It's on there securely. Now I'm gonna tighten, put that bolt back in and push it as far along to the switch as possible. So I get that bolt, that long one, and we're just gonna put it right back in and tighten it down. Okay, after you tighten the two screws, the most important thing is that you wanna make sure that your throttle uh, moves freely. You wanna make sure it retracts freely. There is no bind. It looks like it's moving pretty good. If you notice that after you put the cover back on or you tighten back the, 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 your kill switch and you move your throttle and it gets stuck, just reposition it and uh, you should be able to do it. And it also could be that if you have it too close to your bar end, it might be because it's too close. could be that uh, you, have it might, you might have it too close to the bar end so it's actually catching on the bar end. You wanna make sure that when you put it on there, you wanna give yourself just a little bit enough, enough space to put your switch, put your brake lever back on and still uh, have a little bit of space here you you do have enough on on the lever or on the handlebar itself to do that if you put it too close just move it back just a little bit over and it should be on there fine to putting back our brake lever onto the handlebar itself so like i was saying before you're going to notice that on your bracket here uh it is going to have a little arrow pointing up and it's actually going to say up you make sure make sure you don't put it this way because it's not going to work so make sure you put it the right way you're going to put it back on there and then right now it would also be a good time to actually put a little bit of thread lock on here now that I've taken it apart. Okay, I put the bolt through the, the bracket and then I just put thread lock there. That way I know how much thread lock to put. So now we're just gonna get our bolt. We're gonna get our lever and then you want your cable. You could also put it through this little bracket here that's actually holding other cables. Uh, you could put it there for now. Get your uh, brake lever bracket and then uh, just put it on there and, and uh, just slightly thread it and bolt it through uh, for now until you get the other bolt on there. You want to give even amount of tension on both bolts. Okay, here's a prime example if you notice that you tighten something too tight once you put everything on there if you notice that your throttle is getting stuck like this as you can see it's not retracting back like it's supposed to that means something over here is too tight on the bar so you don't want this you want something that's gonna retract right away you want it to go retract right away by itself as you can see it's it's being stuck and you don't want this to happen especially after putting all this together and you're going to be riding and you let go of your throttle you want it to be stuck on throttle and then cause an accident uh, for yourself so okay i found out why the throttle was getting stuck it had nothing to do with the switch it had nothing to do with this over here it was actually because i had it too close to the to the bar end so i loosened up the bar end and i installed a few spacers okay as you can see i installed three small spacers into the bar end so once i put the bar in and in it should give me a little bit of space so that way this doesn't um, get stuck as I move the throttle. Okay, now that I tightened down my bar end, it's sticking out a little bit from the bar, but actually it doesn't really bother me that much. You know, the more it sticks out, the more it's going to, you know, until I find some bar ends that actually fit my bike until they're not on back order anymore. Um, so it's sticking out that much. It's not, it doesn't bother me. So as long as my throttle doesn't stick, that's the most important. Okay, next what we want to do is we want to grab our power, power wire with our inline fuse, as we already had soldered here earlier. And I've already installed the 10 amp fuse that we're supposed to be using. You could go ahead and put the little rubber cap on. Okay, now next we're going to splice this end of the inline fuse. You don't want to splice too much, you just want enough so you can wrap your, your cable on it. So we're going to go with around this much. Make sure you twist your ends. As you can see, um... When I was doing this earlier, I didn't have heat shrink tubing on all the terminals. I kind of ran out of supplies. So I ran to the store real quick to get some more heat shrink tubing. Uh, so I could make sure that all my terminals are covered. I also put some shoe goo and put a zip tie over it. So that where they're, they're all together. What we do now is grab our, our red power cable that we have right here that we had looped together earlier. And I already had twisted both ends together. So now what you want to do is you want to twist the two ends like so so they're kind of like in line but before we do that we're going to put some heat shrink tubing over our wire here that way after we're done soldering we could just slide it over and heat up the tube 
Okay, now if you're going to be doing any kind of soldering on your bike, make sure you have a towel or a rag, something that's going to protect your bike. You don't want to be doing this over the plastic of your bike or any part of your bike because if a solder falls onto the plastic, it's going to burn a hole in it. Or if it falls on any part of your bike, it's just going to leave a little bit of a, some damage and you don't want that. All right, next what we're going to do is get our soldering iron or soldering gun and our solder and we are going to solder this connection. Okay, so now we're going to slide our tubing right over it. If you have any troubles trying to slide your tube over it, sometimes it'd be a good idea to maybe get your pliers and maybe crimp the connector a little bit more just to get it so it could slide over easy. Give it a little bit just to compress the solder and the cables together a little bit more. And then also you could start twisting it back and forth on your connector. That also helps wiggle it in there. Once you get it on there, I would say halfway point, you'll, you'll feel it as you're putting the connector over the heat shrink tubing. Once you feel it in the middle there, now you want to just shrink your tubing. Alright, now you're done with that connection. Okay, next are going to be our two black connectors. Here are two black connectors that we had previously tied together here. On our switch, we have the three cables. We got the black that we already pre-soldered earlier. We have a blue cable and we have a brown cable. The black cable is going to connect to the blue cable. Before we tie the two wires together, we're going to get some uh, heat shrink tubing. We're going to put it over and then we'll our wires together. And try to do the best you can on trying to slide your heat shrink tubing over the your two wires since it is kind of a short. If anything, we'll probably, to make this go in more because it's kind of too close to the connector, I am going to disconnect the negative side. That way I kind of put the, the two wires together even better and slide heat shrink tubing as far as I can down. Okay, so it should look like this. Now it looks like one cable and more together. Now you get to slide your heat shrink tubing away from your connector and so it won't shrink on you. Okay, so now we're gonna get our blue cable from our switch and we are gonna tie it together with our two black cables. Again, if you're doing this little connector and uh, this kind of tying or wire wrapping and you feel like you don't have enough cable to really tighten the connection to sew, just go ahead and splice a little bit on either or. We're gonna get a little bit of solder paste and I usually always, anytime I'm doing any type of soldering i'm always using solder paste because it helps me a lot with soldering my connections okay next what we're going to do after we finish soldering we are going to get our tubing put it over our connector and then shrink it after we shrink it since we did disconnect the one black cable now we're going to plug the one black cable back to its location slide it over all the way all right next what we're going to do is grab our single yellow cable now this is our light cable that's going to help light up our switch that way when you turn on your blinkers it will also turn on on the switch so we're going to slide it over our yellow cable here and it's like i said slide it all the way to the end make sure it's away from the connection because this, this part gets hot if you were to have it right there while you're soldering this part's actually going to shrink and you're not going to be able to put it over your connector so just always make sure that you put it away as far as away as possible from your soldering connection job okay so now we're going to put our two cables together here and get our solder paste and then solder our connection okay once you're done with your soldering connection next what we're going to do is get to our indicator cables okay now to get better access to our cables we're going to have to pretty much take apart the switch by taking apart the switch you're going to have better access to the cables that we need to get for our turn signals so to take apart the switch all you have to do is just take out a screw that is located right over here so there's a screw hole right here that's one screw right there another screw is located area right here light switch should come off okay once you take out your switch here now you'll have easier access to get to your cables which is right here so it has some insulation on here so what you want to do is get your exacto knife and be very careful as you're you're cutting into the insulation so just find like a, a nice little spot poke your knife through it and then slowly start cutting away at the insulation and make sure you're very careful once you start once you get a little spot that you could peek through uh, just be careful and mindful on where you're cutting because you don't want to cut a wire off that won't be good so just carefully go along I would say probably two inches worth of insulation you should be able to um, you know splice through so just 
go carefully along the edge here and uh, cut the insulation off. Okay, once you cut the insulation off, the two wires that you want to be looking for is a green wire and a brown wire. Those are going to be your two cables that you're looking for. Green wire and a brown wire. Alright guys, so here's going to be our two cables that we're going to need to get into. One is green and the other one is a solid brown. So one's a solid green and the other one's a solid brown from your turn indicators. So you want to do is just make sure you have spliced enough. I didn't, it looks like I didn't splice enough, so I'm gonna get back there and I'm gonna splice it a little bit more opened. Again, you're not cutting these cables, you're just splicing the insulation out a little bit so you could wrap your, your cable around it. So on this one, I'm just gonna splice it a little bit more further out and same with the brown cable. Okay, so now you wanna grab your one cable on, on your uh, from your relays. I have a yellow and I have a red. It doesn't matter if I go with red and green or if I go with yellow or green or whatever colors you use for your turn signal cables, it doesn't matter. At this point, we're just going to put our two cables here because this is our, our left and right indicators right here anyway. So they're just going to light up at the same time. I'm just going to grab my yellow cable here and I'm going to put it to the green. And what you want to do, separate it there a little bit, grab your cable, put it underneath, and then just wrap it over the green. So just give it a good loop around. Okay, here's a picture, a real close up of the connector. As you could see, I just grabbed my yellow cable and, and just looped it over the green exposed cable. Okay, now here's a close up of the solder I just did on this yellow cable to the green. You wanna make sure that you, when you, after you put the flux, that you heat up the flux and then heat up the cables and then put your solder because that way the solder will get through all the strands of the cable and make sure you have a good connection. Okay, next we're gonna grab our red cable and we are going to get into the brown cable, which is right here. And we're gonna do the same thing like we did with the green cable. We're gonna put our cable underneath it and then we're just gonna loop it around the brown cable. You're just gonna keep looping it until, okay. Now we're gonna put a little solder paste and solder our connection. Okay, once you're done soldering, now you wanna grab your cables and you're gonna to want to, let's see, the easiest way would be to either fold them this way or fold them that way because we're gonna be taping up all this insulation that you had cut out earlier. Kind of, there we go. All the insulation that we had cut out, we're, we're gonna uh, use electrical tape and cover it all right back up. But before we do that, we are gonna put electrical tape on, on each of our connectors individually because you don't wanna put them together because if you put them together when you tape everything up, now they're touching. So when you put your turn signals on your, on your bike when you're riding, you wanna make a left turn people behind you are going to be confused because both of your blinkers are going to be on, going on at the same time. So we're going to tape these up individually and then we're going to tape it up together. Let's get a little bit of electrical tape and tape it up. All right, now that we have taped up our little connectors, as you can see, I taped them up individually. Now we're going to tape up this whole area that we had taken apart earlier before. So I'm just going to put the insulation that we have cut before, just so I could have a little bit of the factory insulation. And then I'm going to start from up here and I'm just going to tape all the way to the casing of the turn signal. Okay, after taping up your all your cables right back, make sure when you were doing your taping up that you were doing it very tightly. Don't just kind of loosely put it under. You want this to be tight because you don't want no water getting in there and all that stuff. Just make sure you type tape it all the way to the edge of the casing of your turn signals. Now what we want to do is install our turn signal controller right back on our handlebars. It just pretty much clamps on. All right, now you want to get your screws that you had uh, left in your nice little Ziploc bag. You're going to notice that one screw is longer than the other. Now what you want to do is that you want to use the long screw in the back and the short screw in the front. You don't have to worry about putting Loctite on this, on this bolt because this is plastic. The only time I use Loctite is if it's going into another metal part. And once you get it tight, you don't want to over tighten it. Just make sure it's, it's just kind of tight enough where you can't turn it anymore. If you over tighten it, you could strip the threads inside the plastic because then you're going to have to replace the whole uh, control box. Next would be to plug in our positive and negative cable. Okay, so I want to mount it like there is a loop uh, underneath your handlebars here. You can see it right there where two cables are already coming out put my positive and negative cable through that loop then I'm, we're going to wire it through the frame of the bike towards the back okay now this part is up to you you have an assortment of colors of cables here and also you have your cables down here it's up to you if you want to wrap your whole thing in, in black electrical tape um, that way kind of you know it's out of sight out of mind uh, I think I'm going to do that too just because when I put it over here 
there's just so much colors of wires just kind of there. I don't want it to be that noticeable. I'll wrap the whole thing into electrical tape and then I'm going to wrap my two cables that are going to my indicators with electrical tape also. After I wrap it up in electrical tape, I'm actually going to zip tie it to an existing cable that's here. Okay, after you electrical tape your whole entire connection, what I did is that I, when I wrapped it, I kind of overlaid each time I wrapped it. And then over here, I also wrapped up my two cables that went to the indicators, the light indicators that go all the way up to the switch here. Okay, so you're going to grab your zip tie and you're going to zip tie your, your cable here, which is your uh, wire for your LED indicators. And you only need one zip tie. It's just one to, you know, just keep the cables in place. And you don't want to do it too tight because you want it to have movement when you're turning your handlebars. So I would say about there. And then also you could also move it around if you have to. But I'm going to try to keep it as close to the connector as possible. So then you just cut off the excess and you're good to go there. Next is you're going to get a, a zip tie over here. A little bit more thicker so it could go through the loop here. There's other locations on your bike. It's up to you on where you want to mount it if you want it to be out of view from anybody. The only thing is is that prior to doing this install, I didn't realize and I didn't take into account that, you know, I thought I had enough cable by doing one foot of the indicator lights that it would be plenty of space here so i figured one foot of cable was going to be enough now that we have everything on the bike i noticed that's actually kind of short and i also didn't take account of the steering so if you want to put it on other parts of the bike one foot of cable is not going to be enough positioning of our relays that's where I have it for me in my particular location. And as you could see, when I turn my bike to the right, it barely clears. It just has just enough room to, to not hit my cluster gauge here. As you can see, I think there's like half a millimeter of space uh, in this area. So I just have it enough so I could clear it, and it's no problem for me. When and also when I turn it to the right, it's not a big deal. But again, you want to put the, the relays where it's convenient for you. Cables here, power and ground cables. And we are going to route this alongside the bike to the back where the battery is located. I've already taken out my back seat, my little plastic piece that went here, and our regular main seat. Right now we're just going to wire it alongside the frame and towards the back. Okay, now right now we're going to route our power and ground cables. So what you want to do, to we're going to attach it to the frame of the bike and follow the frame of the bike towards the back to the battery. So what you're going to need is you're going to need your four millimeter Allen key and you're going to be taking out these screws. You're going to be taking out this whole cover here and your triangle piece in the back. So these two screws here and don't forget on the inside of this cover there is two smaller screws or two little plastic screws on the inside. So those, so a Phillips screwdriver on these two bits on the inside, your two screws here, and then your two screws on the triangle piece. All right, now that you got your covers off, you're gonna get your positive and negative cable, and we're gonna go alongside the frame of the bike. So we're gonna go alongside here, all through here, all the way through the frame here. Once we get over here, well, I'll let you know what we're gonna do in this uh, little area over here. But this is where you wanna grab all your zip ties and uh, when we right now at this point as you can see I have my fuse located right here it's pretty easy access if I turn the handlebars all the way so if my fuse ever pops for the hazards it's easy for me to get to I could just turn the handlebars all the way to the right pop open the fuse take it out replace it easy as can be you always want to make sure that you have your fuses especially when you're doing electrical work you want to have your fuses in an area where you could get to it easily so we're just going to give a little bit more slack on our cables uh, over here in this area because we are going to be turning our handlebars left and right. So first we're going to put our one zip tie right over here, right by the bolt. There is a bolt right here. Okay, if you see that there's a bolt right here, you want to use your first zip tie. What we're going to do is we're going to feed it through here and just bring it over to the other side. And mind you, the, some of these uh, locations where we're going to be putting our zip ties are tight. So just try to do the best you can. All right, so we just fished it through, and then we're gonna put our zip tie on there. So we're just gonna, right now, if we pull on it a lot, you're gonna see that we, um, 
extended our cables here too much. So we're just going to push it in a little bit and just give it a, a little bit of slack. So, you know, a, a little bit of a, some loose slack there. So it could have plenty of room. If anything, you want to just give it a little bit more just in case. So it looks pretty loose now. So I'm just going to hold it here and then I am going to tighten up the zip tie. And also keep your try to keep your, your cables um, parallel to each other. Don't put them overlapping each other. Just try to do it as parallel as you can with your zip tie. I'm going to put it underneath actually this rubber piece. And then I'm going to tighten up my zip tie on top of this rubber piece. And then we're going to snip the end of this cable. Now once you snip the end of the cable, what I like to do is I like to hide those, those ugly square pieces. So I'm just going to use my scissors here and push that black square out of sight. Just push it all the way as much as you can. There you go. Now it looks like a nice clean zip tie installation. Now we're just going to go alongside the frame and start putting more zip ties along the way. Okay, as we continue going along our frame with our wires, just keep on grabbing zip ties. And you don't have to keep on putting zip ties every few inches. Just you just want to guide your your, you know, your cables along your frame. Then we're going to put another one right over here at the end of this little rubber piece on the bike. So again, I'm just going to feed it through this end actually. And then just kind of feel for the zip tie. There it is. I'm going to pull it through. Hold on to it because they too tend to, tend to get away from you. And then zip down my cable. Once you zip down your cable, you could go ahead and, and trim off this excess of the zip tie. What I'm going to do is actually have a little like pipe over here, a little tube. We're actually going to go underneath it. So let's just grab our two ends of our cables, kind of go around the cable or around this little tubing area and just bring it through. Let's fish it through here. If you like, you could also get another zip tie and you could put one over here on this little area, which I'll probably do. And then I'll also put one on the opposite side to make sure that it's, it's a nice tight, uh, you know, where the cables are not going to get loose on me. So I will probably put one there and there. Okay, now that we're at the back end of our bike here, we do have an excess amount of cable. You could either you know, use as much as you need and then clip the cable so you don't have an excessive amount and then just resolder your connectors or you could actually just tuck it onto the plastic side over here. So you could actually just kind of, you know, follow in the plastic there. Either, you know, kind of just fold it over as so. So if you want, you could just kind of fold over your cables like so. Put a small little zip tie here and then just feed it on over. So we'll do that for now, but preferably you want to have as less amount of wires in this area anyway. All right, so now we're going to take out the screws off of our battery. Now here's a small trick that you could do to prevent that little locking nut on falling to the bottom. If that happens to you, as you can see inside, there is a locking nut or a screw that if that screw falls to the bottom, it's kind of tricky to retrieve it. So we want to do it from those zip ties that we actually trimmed off. Just grab the excess piece, flat side, you want to install it into the hole. So I'm going to see if I get a good shot here. So just put the, the flat side inside the hole and as far as that it would go inside. Now what this is doing is actually holding the little locking screw um, so it doesn't fall to the bottom. Well, if it does fall to the bottom, it's actually holding it in place for you so you could still get access to it. So once you take the whole screw out, um, it's still holding the little locking nut. So if anything, you could actually just push on the little plastic piece to bring back the nut so you could actually screw it down again. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up and take out 
our bolt for our battery and it's going to be an eight millimeter screw so just start loosening it up and take out the bolt and then I'm just going to put my my screw through the hole on the eyelet here as you can see it's a perfect size for that so now I'm going to put everything back so I'm just going to feed all my connections here that I got going on as you can see I have a lot here and on your bike you may not have everything that I have going on so I do have a lot of connections and and things plugged into my bike what do is uh, grab your 8 millimeter wrench and then start, start tightening down your bolt undo my bolt here Okay, then you want to put your positive end on this end and then just plug everything back how you had it before. Your socket here and then tighten on the bolt all the way. Okay, once you're done tightening down your cable, now you want to go ahead and remove your little plastic piece that was holding the nut and now you're all set to go. Okay, now we're done with wiring up your hazard lights. Now we're going to do is put all our plastics back together with our back seat, our plastic center piece there, and our main seat, our triangle piece over here, and then also our cover that goes alongside this area. Okay, so the way I showed you how to wire the hazard lights is going to allow you to use your hazard lights with your bike on or with your bike completely off. So there's gonna be the two ways you'll be able to use your hazard lights. Okay, so now let's give our hazard lights a test. Let's go to our switch and let's turn that on. As you can see, our switch is lit and blinking with the hazard lights. You also see on the gauge cluster, you have your green light on, letting you know that your lights are on. Now let's go to the front of the bike and see if the hazard lights are blinking. And as you can see, the hazard lights are on and blinking on both sides. Now let's go to the back. And as you can see in the back also, they're blinking at the same time. Now back to the front. So not only will you be hearing the clicking noise of the flasher relay, you're also going to have a little light notification here on the switch letting you know that your lights are on. Now we're going to turn them off. Now we're going to turn it on the bike, on accessory. Okay, now we're going to turn our left turn signal. On the gauge indicator, it's letting you know your signal is on. Let's make sure on the front of the bike. Okay, as you can see, left turn signal on the front of the bike. And then in the back, you kind of see the reflection that the left turn signal is on. Now let's make sure on the right turn signal. To the front here as you can see right turn signal is flashing correctly and then same thing on the back you could see that it's going on at the same time therefore it's correct now let's cancel that now let's turn on our hazard lights again indication here that the hazard lights are on also an indication here on the gauge cluster. Now let's check on front of the bike. And as you can see, both lights are blinking on at the same time in the front. Now let's check in the back. 
Again in the back, indicating that your lights are blinking on at the same time. And there you guys have it. Now you're able to have hazard lights with your bike on or with your bike off. Even completely with the key completely out. So if you're ever stuck somewhere and you need to take your key out for some weird reason, you could actually have your key out and still have your hazard lights on. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and leave any comments below. Thank you for watching.